Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and today we return for the penultimate episode of the F123 My Team Career Mode. Yes, round 22 of season 4 of this series and we head back here to Portamao. Of course, if you missed out on yesterday's video from the Brazilian GP Sprint Race Weekend, I would highly recommend going back and checking it out. But yeah, today we return to Portugal and of course, yeah, if, if you were living under a rock and you missed yesterday's episode... We've done it. We are officially Formula 1 World Champion. We've got two races to go, 52 points available, and a 74-point lead over Max Verstappen here. We've also been able to wrap up the Constructors' Championship as well uh, with the help of Felipe Drogovic and Lando Norris. So heading into the final two races... We can sit back. We can enjoy ourselves. I'm going to do a couple of last question mark challenges to finish out the series and to have a little bit of fun with. But again, a massive thank you to all of you for the continued support on the channel. Of course, you know, we've got a lot of exciting things upcoming in the future. F123 is certainly not going to be going anywhere either, so you do not have to worry about that. But yeah, let's head though here to the Portuguese Grand Prix. Starting from the back of the field, we can just jump right in with the race. The Formula One circus has made its way to the southern coast of Portugal this week and is preparing for what I think will be a terrific race here in Portimao. So Portimao features 15 turns over the course of its 2.9 mile length. Nine are right-handers, six are to the left. This is a track with a lot of uphill action, which only accentuates the importance of getting those exits right, especially at turn four, where a good line can present opportunities to pass on the way into turn five. Let's run you through the driver grid order for today's exciting race. George Russell will begin today's event in pole position with Pierre Gasly alongside. Moving on to the rest of the grid, we have Drogovic, Fittipaldi, Verstappen, Oscar Piastri, Sonoda, Leclerc, De Vries, Ocon, Magnussen, Albon, Sainz, Halger, Theo Porcher, Dewan, Stroll, Bottas, Liam Lawson, Joe, Sargent, and Mr. Monaco. That's it then, it's time to go racing as we head down trackside for today's race. And joining me again for the race today, Natalie Pinkham. Let's talk about Mr. Monaco. They've been involved in a number of costly incidents lately. That's got to affect their mindset going into this race. It's not an ideal situation by any means. When you get into a bad run like that, there's always the risk of frustration creeping in, which can cause more mistakes and locks you into this vicious cycle. Hopefully today they can get through turn one cleanly and stay calm for the rest of the race. OK, here we go. I know what you can do. Don't let me down. Well, hang on just one minute. We, we come here to Portugal. We line up at the back of the field for a bit of fun. And the game goes and just go says I've been involved in a load of cons costly incidents. We've won four of the last five Grand Prix and just wrapped up a world championship. Surely that should be what we're talking about. F123 in a nutshell, ladies and gentlemen. But 33 laps, though, ahead of us around the Portuguese Grand Prix. Starting on a set of soft compound tyres, and then we'll make a switch over to some mediums later on. Mercedes with a front row lockout here. So Red Bull, even with me out of the picture, still can't seem to get their cars back to the front of the field. I can't remember when their last victory was. Okay, was it was a long old time ago. Anyway, let's do this thing though. Portuguese Grand Prix start from the rear of the field. We can be calm into turn one. Five red lights. There's the lights out and away we go. Lance Stroll, Bottas both not getting particularly away well there as Bottas is going to try and put me in the wall. So we head down towards someone. Don't often see that from the flying fin as I could just see Lawson and Doohan Trying to head in my general direction in towards Term 1. And we'll try and claim a few more freebies through the first couple of corners. They're up, what, seven places? Six places to round our way up through the next couple of corners. Esteban Ocon struggling a little bit in his Alpine. One of very few drivers to remain at the same team that he started this series in. As we'll try and have a look around the outside of Teo Porsche. Thank you very much. Yeah, eight places gained then in the opening, what, five corners here at Portimao. Can't really complain about that all too much here. I mean, it won't be too long 
before we're up inside the points then. I mean, like I said, we're, we're under no real pressure anymore. We're just having a bit of fun in these last few Grand Prix of the series. Really just have come on really strong late on in this game. Of course, Lewis Hamilton took the victory here last season, uh, kept his perfect streak alive in Portimao, but obviously, yeah, now retired from Formula 1. And of course, Verstappen actually retiring at the end of this season as well. Um, so although this save isn't going to continue in F123. I am tempted um, to simulate the, the, you know, the final five seasons of this game and obviously just see what does happen inside F123, whether there were some interesting storylines that were potentially brewing in the future. We've not even got any regulation changes for next season, so yeah, it looked like we were going to enjoy even more success there as down the inside of Alex Alden will go. And lead us up into unlucky for some P13. Nice Hopefully, Keep therefore, we can try and get sights in the near future. Well, I do believe it was only Ferrari and Alfa Romeo that kept their lineups right from the get go in this game. But what are we going to be able to do against Carlos Sainz? Or thought about having a look down the inside. Not quite able to make it happen this time around. Um, yeah, Ferrari. You know, they've, they've done fairly well. They've often actually, though, in my previous My Team career modes. Uh, wrapped up the first championship and then not really won anymore. So clearly EA okay, like to give them, you know, that lifeline and then snatch it away from them once again as we've got yellow Zao, Alpha Tauri grinding to a halt very, very early in this afternoon's running. And that is Jack Doohan then already out of his first Portuguese Grand Prix. Carlos Sainz trying to go defensive from me at one. Not really sure why. He's gonna wheel bang with me off the exit. There is Dennis Hauger in front of the other Ferrari, just tripping over ever so slightly. Can we try and get a run on Charles Leclerc? Because of it, we're a little way back at the moment, but we might be able to try and dive him into the hairpin. Down the inside will go. And there we go. That's how you overtake both Ferraris in the space of three corners. All right, Dennis Hauger then. Not going to have any DRS, so it might be easy pickings here, but Williams finally seem to have come on a little bit right at the end of this series, around the outside of Hauger will go. Thank you very much. And yeah, definitely need to try and get back on the Williams Road to Glory as well uh, over on Twitch in the very near future. Got a lot of work to do in that series. So hopefully we're going to be able to continue that on. But it appears that, well, George Russell at the front of the field is absolutely romping away from the rest of the pack. But Gasly seemingly struggling just a little bit. He's starting to let a couple of cars by. Oscar Piastri uh, and Felipe Drogovic have found their way through. But... Yeah, Gasly already bunching up the rest of the field quite aggressively, actually, very early on still in the day. As we round our way back down the other side of the hill, Kevin Magnussen still, yeah, just in front of me at the moment. Oh, that is a big lockup. So easy to do down there, actually, on F123. Just go straight on. Feels as much as look at that outside curbing, it feels like. But will we be able to get a run, then? on Kevin Magnussen as we round our way through the final couple of turns. It's not been a bad run at the final couple of corners. You have to use so much battery, though, to even try and get close to the AIs. We're going to be up towards the red line. There we go. 217 to the outside of Magnussen, who breaks very early. Oh, we get a warning on the exit, but I'm still taking it. Nice work, mate. That brings you up a place. Mark loving it. And, yeah, that was like a lonzo against Schumacher all those years ago at 130R. We just had the confidence that the AI on the inside was not going to be able to break as late. Can we try and get a run on Sonoda? We'll slide down the inside. And Yuki... Oh, hello. Um, we'll, we'll kick the back end out in front of him as well on the exit for good measure. But Yuki has been navigated. Good stuff. We've moved into P8. P8 now. Yellow's out almost immediately. Is that okay, Pierre clear. Gasly breaking down for good? No, it's a car behind us. It's Dennis Hauger. Hauger having such a good start to the Grand Prix there and already that Williams our second casualty of the afternoon so two of our rookies that made their F1 debut this season already out here in Portugal. McLaren now though theoretically have a very very fast race car inside F1 23 but clearly not fast enough that Enzo Fittipaldi is going to jump out of the way out of the final corner there. Are we going to see De Vries get a run? On Pierre Gasly, of course, the man he replaced down at Alpha Tauri. Yes, we are. And yeah, Pierre has definitely got an issue with that McLaren as we're going to send it down the inside. A little bit of front locking, but we get away with it. And again, we'll, we'll complete another move and kick the back end out. Kind of show off in front of the AI here. But 
And if he's up next, then our top four a little bit more spread out. But we're only on lap seven. We really have just kind of sliced and diced our way right back to the front very, very quickly this afternoon. If this isn't a champion's drive so far, I don't know what is. Uh, but I guarantee by saying that, I am definitely jinxing myself. Well, this might also be one of the last races I can't use number 21 inside F123. Of course, Nick DeFreeze uh, will be in Las Vegas. And then after that, he will no longer be in my game save for F123. But down the inside of the McLaren driver, we will go. And up now into P5. Don't get a warning. We want to try and get these last two races done without a penalty. Uh, but yeah, Verstappen next up, a couple of seconds up the road. Like I said, our top four very much more spread out. Well, like one third distance. Five, there we go. Team confirming half a second a lap faster than Max Verstappen's. We're now inside the DRS range of the Red Bull and the one man who probably has actually seen the most bad luck inside F123. No doubt about it, he's probably still got the best stats of anyone in this series. But three runners up in four seasons is kind of crazy for Max Verstappen there and okay, I mean the same work. for Red Bull as well in fact yeah no they did with the constructors didn't they of course last season um but yeah really have had a nightmare in this career mode of course Checo Perez uh carrying them last season but yeah Verstappen did finish P2 Red Bull definitely were constructors champions but yeah four different drivers four different teams not a bad little run we had inside F123 similar vein uh, to real life F1 between 2006 and 2010. Team worried about the tyres. That's interesting to note. Probably going to box end of 14, end of 15. And then obviously try and go to the end on a set of mediums. But yeah, now we've got to try and close up to Oscar Piastri as Drogovic actually showing very good pace. And you consider the fact he's on mediums. The, the timing on that was absolutely comical. Only I could talk about how well Drogovic is doing and immediately his car just get cursed. Well, Drogovic is now definitely slowing Oscar Piastri and myself down as we round our way towards the end of lap 13. 20 more laps to go here this afternoon. So we're roughly 40% of the way into this GP. Someone who's better at maths than me, try and correct me on that one but are we going to see Piastri get a run on Felipe then out of the final corner we're going to try and make it three wide as we head back down in towards someone there Felipe Drogovic is like a sitting duck in the middle whoa Oscar Piastri trying to come across me there and two big snaps of oversteer of course we get a warning for that because it was definitely something I could do in that incident and oh yeah that was rather scary between myself and Oscar that actually hurt my shoulder slightly trying to save that one. Sim racing is dangerous, ladies and gentlemen, but the show must go on as Verstappen now as well. Going to try and get past Felipe behind us. Yes, he will. So Verstappen trying to get back in the fight. George Russell, first car into the pit lane then at the end of 14. Are we going to see Piastri follow him in? Yes, we are. We're going to try and get as much slipstream as we can off of that Aston Martin and just do one extra one here. So we might be a bit vulnerable to an undercut as Verstappen as well. Also going to be peeling yes, into the pit lane. P1, P1, the race. Mark loving an overtake on a car in the pit lane. Okay, so I forgot to pit. I swear I did this last season here as well at Portugal. I just completely forget to pit sometimes around this venue. And I don't really know why. That's going to give us even more work to do against Russell later on. You can see he's only 15 seconds back. How much more is that gap going to come down by? No, 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 no. There we go. That gap to George is going to come down a lot. As Felipe Drogovic is going to get back past me. Didn't even see my teammate there. As we go for a nice pirouette. And that's probably cost us, what, a good 10 seconds or so? The gap down to George six seconds here so we've had an absolute nightmare there and that's why we should have boxed when the team told me to because these tyres definitely pretty much at the cliff I guess the worst thing that can happen now is Drogovic also intends on peeling in at the end of this lap luckily Drogovic stays out for yet another one so we will box in now get the car slowed down thank you 
Um, yeah, we've definitely lost out a lot of time there. Probably going to be out, I reckon, around Gasly and Yuki Sonoda. It's not the longest pit lane in the world here in Portsmouth, but it's certainly a scary one to come out of. Um, but yeah, able to take those, well, accidentally taking those softs a lot further this afternoon than I ever had intended to. 2.3 seconds go, stop. There goes Yuki Sonoda. Here comes Pierre Gasly. So I was pretty much bang on with where I assumed we'd come back out. Now again, we've got a lot of work to do in the second half of this thing. I definitely still feel P2 is possible this afternoon. 15 laps to go here from Porto Mau. I think we're in a net P8, I want to say. We've still got both Ferraris and Drogovic that need to pit. But yeah, unless something happens to Russell, don't think sensibly we're going to get back to the Mercedes today. Could have been quite a good fight for the win towards the end of this one. But yeah, I, I'm silly is what we're gonna what we're going to say to that one. Drogovic into the pits, though, at the end of that lap as well, as we're going purple uh, through the middle sector. Are we going to be able to try and find the time that we need claim that fastest lap bonus point there? Not that we need the points anymore, but always nice to take them away from the other drivers as heading up over the start-finish line. Gasly is 17-2, uh, sorry, we set 16-4, and we will get the jump on both Charles Leclerc and my teammate Drogovic back inside the points. There we go, Carlos Sainz into the pits then, so we're going to be back into P8 then of the GP. Not sure how we didn't get the DRS off of Pierre Gasly, but we'll keep pushing. All right, come on then, Pierre, at the final corner to start lap 21, almost at two-thirds distance this afternoon. And we need to start making moves once again. DRS enabled to the outside of the Frenchman. Come on, Pierre, back out of it. Oh, he hasn't. Oh, we just so I get round him, though. That was a bit scary for a moment, but proving that we can still overtake here as that's a curb, Matt. Don't hit that. Second one of the day. Come on. I'm pretty much averaging to be right on the cusp of a penalty by the end of this. Keep it clean and tidy throughout the last few laps. I really want to get through these last two races without a penalty, but I also really want to get past Yuki Sonoda here. Right, the final couple of turns will go once again. No, I always say it, but Portimao is such a fun circuit to drive on on the F1 games. We're having to use a lot of battery at the moment, though, just trying to get runs on the AI. Is Yuki Sonoda will go defensive? Oh, <laughs> that is, if ever, you were going to show someone a clip in Formula 1 of living rent-free in someone else's head. That is the perfect example there. Yuki was still ahead of me into the braking zone. We broke late and we swooped in. And that is P6 again. Make our way through the final couple of corners, though, once more. This time round, all over the back of Enzo Fittipaldi, who is still going to have the DRS on his teammate, Nick De Vries, But hopefully, we're going to be able to try and split the McLaren as we head back down in towards Turn 1. Whoa! And Enzo Fittipaldi, they're actually turned in on me slightly. Which meant I couldn't maneuver. quite get the rotation that I wanted. Mark there saying we made that move look so easy anyway. Oh, don't get a warning. Don't get a warning. And uh, hopefully next up, Nick DeFreeze at the end of this lap. Come on then, Nick DeFreeze. And the inside right. We've got to wait for the end of the lap. We're just going to send it there at the top of the hill. And that one's horrible. When you try and get to the inside of an AI there, you don't really know where the apex is anymore. You can't really see it on the inside. I kind of had to guess myself a couple of times. We made it work, though. It's not quite hitting the upshift there. It really threw me off through the final couple of turns. Ten laps to go, though. Five seconds to Verstappen and Piastri. Let's still try and get on the podium. No! Well, that's annoying. We're just a handful of laps to go. It's going to mean if we do get up to Oscar and Max, which we definitely should, I may have even more work to do, but... Yeah, eight laps to go here in Portugal. That is so annoying. Just ran slightly wide. Oh, Verstappen definitely now trying to push Oscar Piastri along. But look at the traction we're able to get there. Forcing the Red Bull out onto the curbing. And that'll be another place for us once again. My plan was to try and get around these both of them um, in one go. And hopefully leave them to battle it out with each other in the dying stages of this Grand Prix, but we'll wait and see if we can get a run on Piastri at the final couple of corners, unless we can try and do something prior to then. Yeah, definitely not going to be able to rotate the car over enough there 
to try and send it down the inside. And of course, no real opportunities through these final couple of corners unless you've already been duking it out. Oh, so actually, Oscar, a little bit of a wobble there through the final couple of turns. We'll be very, very careful. Make sure we claim the DRS side by side. And uh, the final corner will go. Now with the DRS, surely this one's going to be a done deal. Yep, the Aston Martin, nothing he can do on the run down towards turn one. But we've got five laps to try and pull out three seconds over Oscar Piastri. George Russell, a nine-second lead still at the front of this field. Let's see what we can do. There we go. That's the most critical bit done first of all then. Piastri out of the DRS range. Absolute worldy of a lap. Now we've got to hope those do battle. Three laps to go. Get to Piastri now up to the three seconds. So we're doing pretty well. We're not actually taking that much out of George Russell though. So I reckon Piastri and Verstappen... Oh, I reckon Piastri is actually one of the slowest cars inside the top ten right now. De Freeze, actually, that gap's coming down to the cars in front of him as well. Not by enough, I wouldn't have thought, by the end. But very, very interesting how much that Aston Martin is struggling. Making our way, though, in towards the final lap of the Portuguese Grand Prix. And George Russell looks like he is set to continue Mercedes' dominant spell around this venue. Yeah, the mug has been absolutely rapid all weekend long. Gasly has struggled a bit. Uh, with some reliability issues, but yeah, Russell absolutely has just been able to walk this thing pretty much from the get-go. You know, only lost the lead through the pit stop cycle, but never has been under threat this afternoon. Our three-second penalty isn't going to cost me anything, luckily. Would have been a bit gutted had that happened late on in the day. But, you know, had we not had that spin, I reckon we could have challenged George. Um, so at least we know we got a challenge for the final race of the season in Vegas next weekend out there. 20 second to second though. I don't think it's anything to scoff at all too much either as we round our way through the final corners here in Portimao. Definitely this track is going to return in other series on F123. Absolutely love racing around this venue. One of my favourite on the F1 calendar. But Russell it's going to be a 5 second race victory on the road. It's going to be about 8 seconds once my penalty has been applied there but all the cars actually finishing on the lead lap as well it's quite an impressive feat here in portugal but round in the final corner russell back on top once again his second win of the season for mercedes but we're going to come through to claim a well-earned p2 yes mate i cannot complain about that one that was an excellent drive well done Checkered flag here then in Portimao in what has been another outstanding Grand Prix. Natalie Pinkham, how do you think they were able to set themselves apart today? I really feel the track layout combined with the track temperatures we saw today suited their car. These cars come alive when the tyres are just at the right temperature and the driver did a great job managing that as well. They just look so comfortable out there. It's like anything, it always looks so easy when it all just clicks. Well, Mercedes are on top form once again after an excellent race weekend. It's great to see them up on that podium once again. Monaco increases their championship lead. So then, Natalie Pinkham, who would you rank as your driver of the day? Well, there's no question in my mind. It has to go to George Russell. What a performance. He's got every right to be proud of what he accomplished out there today. Let's move on to the constructors. The owner-driver's team moved to the top of the table. After an event like that, who knows what the sport has in store for us next time out. Be sure to join us once again as we continue to bring you all the excitement of Formula One.
Well, there we are then. The end of the Portuguese Grand Prix. And what more do I have to do to get Natalie Pinkham's appreciation here inside F123? George Russell takes the dub ahead of myself there. Oscar Piastri beats out Verstappen with both McLarens there, fifth and sixth. Sonoda, Gasly, Drogovic and Kevin Magnussen rounding out our top 10. And that means as we head into the final race of the campaign, 81 point lead over Max Verstappen. The gap again is actually closer between him and Yuki than it is between myself and him. Top three are all locked up in the Drivers' Championship there. Charles Leclerc would need a bit of a miracle uh, to close back up to George Russell. Uh, Oscar Piastri looking pretty dead set in P7 as well. They're ahead of Gasly uh, who cannot finish lower than 8th. Four points separate Sainz, Drogovic and Ocon in the battle for the 9th 10th and 11th so that's definitely one to watch out for as we head into the finale there and yeah I mean anyone in the bottom six really looking for any opportunity to score some points late in the game constructors wise Mercedes look to very much have locked that out now ahead of Ferrari Alpine need a bit of a miracle if they can jump Aston Martin as well here late on in the day but we tick over the 700 point mark as well very very happy with that but thank you all so much for watching this video if you have enjoyed please do make sure you leave a like get yourself subscribed and we'll be back tomorrow then for the finale of the f123 my team career mode we're back in vegas you guys do not want to miss that a massive thank you to all of my youtube members and my patreon supporters for their continued donations to help my work these things go much further than i think a lot of you ever realize and allow me to continue making content full time here on youtube so if you want to support me from as little as one pound a month and be featured on all of these end clips either click the join button next to the subscribe or head over to my patreon there's a link down in the description.